Joab was the son of Zeruiah, making him King David's nephew. Along with his brothers, Abishai and Asahel, Joab was part of a family renowned for military prowess. Early on, he emerges as a leader among David's men. Notably, when David sought to secure Jerusalem as his capital, Joab demonstrated exceptional bravery by leading the assault on the Jebusite stronghold, climbing up the water shaft and helping to open the way for David's forces. As a result, David appointed Joab to be the chief and head of his army, a position of high trust and authority. His appointment to this role did not just reflect military skill, it indicated a certain measure of dependability that David saw in him at the time. Jehovah's Witnesses, turning to the scriptural accounts, note that Joab's service under David was marked by acts of both commendable courage and questionable morality. On the positive side, Joab repeatedly proved himself as a strategic commander. Under his leadership, Israel won decisive victories over Ammonites, Edomites, and Syrians. In 2 Samuel chapter 10, for instance, Joab's careful strategizing and courage under fire were integral in dealing with Israel's enemies on two fronts. He displayed a capacity to think quickly, maintain discipline, and rally his troops in challenging situations, all of which helped stabilize David's kingship and promote relative peace and security for the nation. At the same time, Jehovah's Witnesses point out that the biblical accounts are candid about Joab's moral failings. The scriptures do not gloss over the darker side of his character. He could be ruthless, acting in ways that flouted David's expressed wishes and, by extension, disregarded Jehovah's standards of justice and mercy. A prime example is seen in the way Joab dealt with Abner. Abner, Saul's former army chief, had come to negotiate peace with David, and David had accepted his approach. Despite David's blessing on Abner's peaceful departure, Joab lured Abner back and treacherously murdered him, likely under the pretense of avenging his brother Asahel's death. 2 Samuel chapter 3 verses 26 to 27. This act was not just personal revenge but also may have been motivated by Joab's fears that Abner, as a skilled military leader, could threaten his prominent position. David publicly lamented this crime and made it clear that he was not complicit in it, leaving Jehovah to judge the wickedness of the deed. Another disturbing episode involves Amasa, whom David had appointed as head of the army in Joab's place to unite the kingdom after Absalom's revolt. 2 Samuel chapter 19 verse 13, 20, 4 to 10. Joab's reaction to this demotion was not submissive. Under the guise of friendly concern, Joab deceitfully confronted Amasa and murdered him. This was another act of raw expedience, Joab eliminating a rival to maintain his own grip on power. It showed that Joab's sense of loyalty to David had limits, especially when it collided with his own ambitions or sense of personal security. Moreover, Jehovah's Witnesses recognized that while Joab was a staunch ally to David during much of his reign, he did not remain loyal when it came to securing the succession of the kingdom as David's life waned. Toward the end of David's life, Joab aligned himself with Adonijah, who attempted to seize the throne even though David had sworn that Solomon would succeed him. By supporting Adonijah instead of Solomon, who was Jehovah's choice for the next king, Joab undermined the divine arrangement. 1 Kings chapter 1 verses 5 to 7. In doing so, he effectively turned his back on the proper channel of authority that Jehovah had established through David and would establish through Solomon. After Solomon's ascension to the throne, the new king, acting on his father David's final instructions, addressed the injustices Joab had committed. Solomon could not let Joab's crimes against innocent men and his rebellious stance go unpunished. Though Joab tried to seek refuge by clinging to the horns of the altar, this gesture did not shield him from the consequences of his violent past. He was executed, bringing a measure of justice and ensuring that the kingdom under Solomon would start on a foundation of faithfulness and accountability. 1 Kings chapter 2 verses 28 to 34. In the literature of Jehovah's Witnesses, Joab stands as a cautionary example. On one hand, his life demonstrates that great skill, bravery, and even initial loyalty do not guarantee lasting divine favor if those qualities are overshadowed by unbridled ambition, treachery, or a disregard for Jehovah's standards. He reminds readers that true loyalty to God's arrangements cannot be compartmentalized, one must respect not only God's anointed king, in that era, David and then Solomon, but also uphold God's moral principles consistently. Joab repeatedly failed on that latter point, making him a tragic figure rather than a heroic one in the scriptural narrative. J.W. 
Org's materials often emphasize the lessons that can be drawn from such accounts. The story of Joab encourages personal reflection. Are we tempted to use cunning or deceit to protect our own interests? Do we prioritize human authority or our own ambitions above loyalty to Jehovah's arrangement? Joab's life can help readers appreciate the importance of integrity, obedience, and faithfulness, virtues that must guide our actions if we are to remain in God's favor. Indeed, while he showed courage on the battlefield, Joab ultimately fell short of the moral courage required to abide by righteous principles when it mattered most. Therefore, the portrayal of Joab in the publications of Jehovah's Witnesses and on their official website, jw.org, is multifaceted and anchored deeply in the biblical text. It honors the historical record of his accomplishments and high position, yet it is honest about his moral failings. Please share and like and please subscribe.